Hello everyone, this is Kenton Chance of Eyewitness News and I've come here to Kingston, the capital of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We are on the eve of our Easter celebrations uh, around the world. As you may know, St. Vincent and the Grenadines is a predominantly Christian society. And while not all Vincentians celebrate Easter, Easter is a very big celebration here in our country, whether it's for the religious reasons or for the secular reasons. But Easter this year has come at a time when the world is battling the COVID-19 pandemic, eight cases of which have been confirmed here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But even before the numbers had risen to this extent, the economy had pretty much grown to a halt. Tourists had stopped arriving, uh, people were keeping out of, of the city, and it just went on and on. And I have come here today to find out what things are like, how people have been impacted by this pandemic here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. How long have you been a market fan? For years, since I'm a little girl. So, um, how have sales been like this year, especially since coronavirus was confirmed in St. Vincent? Um, well, sales has dropped rapidly because of the coronavirus thing. So, we, we're still trying to cope with it. Some people wear masks, some people don't wear masks. It's our choice. You know? Are you taking any precautions at all? Sure, we have water and hand sanitizer. Look at the water. So, we all good. Once you scratch your face, your eyes, and your nose, and your mouth, we all good to go. But then your biggest problem is that sail has fallen. Yes, sail has fallen. But we are trying to see as this is the Easter weekend. And today is Holy Thursday. We have Good Friday, which is tomorrow, Friday. So we're seeing what we can pick up. So we are uh, thank God that um, they haven't shut down the town before. Or, you know what I mean? Okay. So are you seeing fewer people in Kingston than before? Less. Mm. People are less. People choose to stay at home because they're afraid to die. They trust God, they ain't afraid to die. They just have to take precaution. Right. And this is your water, you said that you used to wash your hands regularly? Yes. Where, where do you fetch this water? Where do you... Inside the mouth. And then you put it here and then you can use it to wash, wash it. your hands. Yes. All right. Thank you very much and all the best. How long have you been doing this kind of business? For the past 15 years. And what, are, what have things been like this year? Things have been good for me this year. So you haven't been affected by Corona? No. Why do you think that is so? Because of my business increase a lot in sell in sales. I sell a lot of more stuff because of, they said that we was going to get the shutdown for two weeks so people buy a lot of stuff. So it was great for me this year. So you, and you also sell a lot of um, stuff that people consume a lot at Easter like salt, fish and smoked herring and mackerel? Yes and I also have the sanitizing product on this side. So did you always stock a lot of sanitizing products? Or? Yes always all the time. Yeah, it was great for me. All right, thank you very much and all the best. All right, thank you. How long have you been vending? I've been vending for a couple of years now. And what has been the impact of the coronavirus on your business? It's been slow for the past couple of weeks. Was it like that at the beginning of the year? Not really. It was better than now. So has your income decreased? It's been decreased, yes. So how are you hoping to cope? Well, I've been trying to cope by the grace of God. Are you seeing any improvements now that it's the Easter weekend? A bit, not much. It should have been better. I'm a fish vendor for at least about 20 years. So what have things been like since this uh, coronavirus? Well, this coronavirus pandemic causing a lot of crisis because since we see that big virus in St. Vincent, hardly people are coming to town. And when we get fish, people will come in to buy fish too. But most of the people who eat fish will come, but they are scared still as well. So are you saying that like your sales are... Cut down. The sales cut down ever since the, the virus started. But, but by what percentage? By how much? How, a quarter? Well, about 60%, 60 of the sales cut down. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how are you managing to meet your expenses? And your and well, we get the fish to buy at a reasonable price. Fishermen them drop down a little dollar or fifty cents of the fish that we normally used to buy the tuna for six dollars. So, since the crisis, we get them to buy for five dollars. So. And you're still, selling for how much? 
eight dollars. Still we and we still have to pay the land the storage and everything. It's a little risky still, but we take any chance. What do you think about the, the policies that the government has um, spoken about the fish and buying most of the fish and that kind of stuff? Well, it, 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 it's a good policy, but right now you don't need no load of boats. Because most of you have fishermen spare, you have boats spare, you have boats that fishermen not going out into, and the more that they have done bottom tongue all places. Well, I mean, helping out with the boat situation is good, but not right now. Now, the kind of crisis we do right now, because the fishermen are hardly out to fish right now. If they may not say to buy boat, well, if they the virus thing pass, it's going it, it to be a good use to, to, to buy the boat to help other fishermen as the young, younger generation that is coming up, the juvenile level, the and the sheet, and the roadside and everything is good, but not right now. It's only no, no boat and nothing right now. So what impact Corona has had on your business? It affecting we business on the road. Nothing ain't going on because nobody ain't buying nothing. So what do you think should be done? The government should step in and do something for help we. Something like what? Some kind of final chat. Because nobody buying we have been for just the same. How long have you been vending? We've been for a long time. A long, long time. How much sales have you had over the last few days? None. That's why I stop home. None, none. Nobody ain't buying nothing. Cause we buy not for the world. And what about today? Nothing said man I come nothing. I like now tell each other I've been staying home again. But you have to eat, so you have to come out. So what do you normally sell? Backs and panty, vests and them stuff there. Right, African you. business. How long have you been vending? About 20 something years. So what have things been like since the corona pandemic? To be honest with God, as you could look and see me really how not much because people scared for coming to town. So I guess your sales are fun. Real fall, real fall, down to the ground, zero percent, and Tomboat still selling out for looking for money every time. What do you normally sell? I sell over the clothes, shoes, everything, but not much in green hand. This corona thing just killed it off. <laughs> but where I think should happen, clean up the tongue. Lock down for a while so that people could have confidence in themselves and come back out to normal. If you notice, all the Chinese business are closed because hmm, there is no supporters. Zero. You think it is if you come out here daytime and tired, and when you go home, you really have nothing satisfying? It's very hard. So I need the government to think about it, close down the tongue, sanitize the tongue and let people have confidence and coming back out. Go house to house and do a trick and let people confidence that the corona ain't the here as much and they should come back out to work as normal. Okay, so I came to the store in Middle Street. The owner and manager did not want to go on camera, but essentially what they're saying is that business is extremely slow. As you can see, there's hardly anyone in the store. There's no one in the store. Well, I think we have two Cuban, Cuban medical workers here. But very, most of the people you're seeing here are employees. No, um, we don't have a lot of, we don't have any customers, pretty much. And this is uh, pretty much a story from store to store here in Kingston. And this is a, a store in Middle Street in Kingston, which is a very popular shopping, shopping area. Well, um, for the last two weeks, the International Airport in Simmons and Green is closed. I operate strictly from the airport. If you notice, I'm in Kingston today trying to make ends meet. But as it is Kenton, it is extremely difficult for taxi drivers to operate and play their business this time because coronavirus has affected the entire world and in particular simply selling grannies and small business operators like myself. How many trips have you had in the last week or so? I haven't had no job in the last two weeks. No jobs or so in the Absolutely last two weeks? Absolutely no job in the last two weeks. The government has said that it would give the taxi drivers a, a, 
a payout of a, is it one off payout? What do you think about that? All right, well, uh, how the Minister of Finance slash Prime Minister saying that they going to give um, business supposed to let me a stimulus of $500 a one-half payout. But $500, what $500 could do to have somebody who has a multitude of bills to pay on a monthly basis. First, you have to put food on your table. You have to take care of utility bills. You have, you have to constantly buy food every day because Kenton, there are poor people like you and I who have to live from paycheck to paycheck. I don't have a, ch a check, but I'm just using it to illustrate how important it is, is for us small business to survive. How are we going to survive in this coronavirus crisis? That's the next question to be asked. What is your plan? What's my plan? Well, as you say, Kenton, I'm in Kingston today, and if you notice, the taxi stand is full of vehicles that is at a standstill. The reason why? Because there's no business going on. I have to make an effort. I make an effort, but because of the competitive nature of the business in Kingston, I will not be able to compete because I am not one of the person who should apply my trade here. But because of situation, I have to look for alternative avenue. Beside that, I don't know where to go. How are you going to spend your Easter? Well, would you come out to try to walk? Well, I believe that um, posters will not go wrong as they normally do. I noticed that the Ministry of Health slash the Prime Minister is suggesting to persons to stay home, right? That might be good, but for small business operators like me, it is going to affect us tremendously. I took some time off Kenton this morning to go around Kingston and look around. Vendors, everybody trying to apply the trade because they need to get instant money coming to take care of the day-to-day -day bills head and everywhere. How long that will continue for, I don't know. But the situation that COVID-19 has created in St. Vincent Grenadines is a serious one and it is having a negative impact on small business like mine. The fact that many buses are not running, has that created more opportunities or people are just not traveling? People are just not traveling. The reason why some of the business places that are cutting back on their staff, some people are conscious that there is COVID-19 um, disease in the air. So they are using whatever necessary means cut where they're going, how they're going and what they're doing. Alright, thanks. Yeah man, later. You are a minibus operator, right? Yeah, for the, last, for the last 15 years. For the last 15 years? Yeah. But today you're selling agricultural produce? Yeah, yeah. From your minivan? Yeah, of course. Can you explain why? Well, the current situation now, with this one cheap on the seat, the business is no longer viable. Because when you factor in the operating costs and, and, and heavy other overhead, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you're operating at a loss. You don't even come close to break even. So the, the wisest thing is to do, the wisest thing to do is to cease production. You, know? you understand? Yeah, you shut down all operation because you now as them old people us, you know, they like you have to for the dance. Yeah, so like, in life in life, you know, you gotta make it best out of every situation, whether things go or bad. So, yeah, why did you choose to switch to agriculture, to selling well, agriculture produce? Well, in these challenging times now, everybody needs food. <laughs> you understand? And at present now, we are experiencing a, a drought now. We, we have prolonged, you know, season of dry weather and so forth. So, we, we have limited food. So, I decided to bring the food them to the people. Where did you get these agriculture produce from? Well, well, actually, you know, I bought them from 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 people in the area to come back to speculate and you know, to sell over to make a dollar. Yes. Okay, you, you were saying that the dance can pay for the like. Can you give an idea of the cost of operating a minibus and how it compares to the money that you in your particular case? Well, well, first tell us what what route do you operate? Well, well, I, I operate from a. Uh, from Vermont to Kingston uh, and, uh, and uh, well, on a six day, day uh, basis you know, from Monday to, uh, to Saturday. Tell us about your cost. Uh, well, at, at the end of the day, you know, it's like, remember, remember you, had the, uh, you had the conductor to pay, plus I have to pay myself again. Plus, I got to set aside a, a, a percentage for, for maintenance. So, so when I when I factor in all them, when I factor in labor costs and the, and the maintenance costs on a, on a daily basis, when you, when you sum up everything over a period of time now, it's like 
is very un unprofitable and the main reason why people go into business is to maximize profit not to break even uh, and not to make a loss understand so you're saying you're not even breaking even no i can't break even with, with them kind of situation here. because when you have to pay like say she and five thousand dollars insurance and and every two months you gotta you got buy tire for for at least fifteen hundred dollars you understand plus you have, you have other minor, minor you know maintenance costs along the way and, and the condition of the roads and etc et what about fuel Very well, well pre presently uh the, the authority say they drop off a dollar off the, uh, off the bill, but it's like not really, you know, really go a long way because people hardly travel now. Because let's say from home to town, a regular chip will be like at least a fifty-four dollars now. And and when you when you when you do the maths now, let's say let's say put like a like a cheap on a seat now, right? You know, you yeah, know, it's something like a, a twenty-four dollars right now per chip. Yeah, see, we're so, saying no. So when we're, when you when you sum up, bed food. and and then we're and then again, it's like it's not every chip that I, that you know that you go be traveling with a amount of passenger. Let, let's say let's let's look at the worst case scenario now. Let's say you pick up some, some, have, some you Let's say pick up some mm -hmm. dollar dollar job coming down now. Mm -hmm. You might make a eight or uh, twelve dollars. Mm -hmm. Like you like, happy for that. So what about the money that money. the government is giving? Two fifty a month. Uh, uh, to be honest, come and see selling the profit. Don't go yet. Uh, boy. Well, to be honest, boy, that, that, they even care. They even care. I'm gonna. Uh, boy, that, so you say even with that 250, it, you think it's better for you to yeah better suspend your service altogether because well, you're still at a loss. Still at a loss. Better for me now to you know to diversify now and, and just forget about the van business for now until the thing become uh, normal we could have traveled with 18 passengers. Do you think that there would be a backlash from your customers? Who say well, work? well they, would, they would be very understanding because now like the, them have themselves now when they sit them down and, and you and you talk to them and, and you show them the ins and out now and, and the kind of the kind of revenue generating now. Them telling you straight up boy. You know, if they were in our situation, they would have, you know, cease operation. Kind of really, you know, in a, in a profit. The fact that you've turned to agriculture, you're from an agricultural district, oh my God. Is that a commentary that regardless of what happened, agriculture is always there and it's always an option? Yeah, man, well, they can't forget the roots and they can't forget where you come from. You know. Agriculture is always there, you know, but it's like you got, you got, you got to kind of restructure the whole thing and, and run it as a business. Because remember, at the end of the day now, you have overheads now. You have a you have a operating cost. You have minimum amount of money that you supposed to make in order to skin business. So if you can't make that now, you don't know you got you got to switch to something else. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much for talking to me, and all the best to you. Yeah, yeah, my brother.